Volunteer Reading Help is a charity that's been going for nearly 40 years and its aim is to help children with their reading. Um, we train volunteers to go into, uh, into primary schools across England um, to help children who are struggling or who are perhaps a little bit behind with, um, with, uh, with their reading. And what we're really aiming to do with this campaign, um, the Better Reading Campaign, is to raise these, uh, the issues of illiteracy and also put forward our, our solution, as it were, for uh, tackling problems of, of illiteracy in primary schools. Last year, 88,000 children left primary school without reaching the required literacy levels. That equates to nearly one in five children in every class who have left primary school without reaching the required reading standard. Um, the effects of illiteracy can be absolutely devastating on a young person's life chances. Um, children who can't read can often become bored or frustrated in class, which can lead to the, um, further problems. Um, actually, 70% of young people who are excluded from school actually have problems with basic literacy. There's also effects between illiteracy and um, poverty, ill health, um, and even involvement in the criminal justice system. Nearly 70% of prisoners actually have basic literacy um, difficulties with basic literacy, and over half of the young people who were arrested in last year's riots had actually left primary school without reaching the required literacy standards. We work in 17 areas. We focus our work on areas of deprivation, so we work a lot around city centres and, and places like that. The VGPA and VRH Better Reading campaigns, I think it's a very exciting initiative because it, it is emphasising is that there's several roles that are important in this reading campaign. It's looking at the social aspects of it and it's looking at the nutritional aspects of it because they can't in a sense be separated. You've got what are the social impacts on the children that are causing them not to read well which are things like um, are they being supported in their home, is English their first language, are they watching a lot of video games and TV, um, is, is reading important in that family. Some families I go into their household and there, there are no books. Um, but the other very important issue is how are those people eating in their family and are they getting enough nutritional support? Is that child getting enough nutritional support for its brain in order for him or her to be able to read and to be able to retain the information that they're receiving in school? Let me focus on one particular little boy that I've um, had the privilege to work with, really. Absolutely super chap, but he, he came to me and he, um, he'd had real problems with concentration, I mean, real issues, and literally he couldn't concentrate for more than, say, um, a few seconds at a time. Now, I understand um, that he'd suffered from fetal alcohol syndrome, which, which meant that he had various physical disabilities, but he also had this real issue with concentration. And um, so we had to sort of work very hard at uh, finding something that's going to interest him. He was obsessed with, say, Ben 10 was his particular obsession, so we needed to find lots of books about that. But initially I read to him, because he wasn't capable of actually concentrating enough to read. And then bit by bit, I read one line, he read the next. Eventually, he managed to concentrate. We began to play Snap, you know. Then we went on to play Top Trump, so slightly more c complex. And he was bright as a button, but this concentration was the issue. And by the end, I would say a couple of terms, you know, he could read a book and he could sit and, um, and, and play games. And that's something he really enjoyed. He had a very complicated family life and that's something I think that he really took away and, and I hope um, will continue to be of use to him. We know is that essential fatty acids are terribly important for brain development and also for brain functioning. They play an essential role in the neurotransmitters in the brain, in particular dopamine and serotonin. And without those good levels of essential fatty acids, young children's brains don't function their optimal levels and I'm interested in children functioning their optimal levels. The reasons why children don't have enough essential fatty acids unfortunately is not just true for children, it's true for a lot of adults as well and that is that our diet in general is deficient in omega-3 essential fatty acids. If one is going to look at supplementation then one's got to look at quality supplementation and pure supplementation because a lot of, particularly with the fish oils, one's got to look at fish oils. A lot of them are contaminated. The big fish, the, our oceans are contaminated and, the, uh, and many of the big fish are contaminated. So one has to be careful with supplementation. And so one wants to look at a company that's thought about that and is um, aiming for a, a supplement that is very low 
in um, contamination first and foremost in my view and then secondly has got adequate amounts of the thing that you're actually taking the supplement for because I find some of the supplements they may be um, they may be relatively pure but they're not high dosage enough to warrant um, or to be useful let's put it like that we know that high doses of in particular EPA are important if one's trying to look at patient uh, children with dyslexia or with ADHD that that a low dosage isn't really going to do the trick and one may be wasting one's money so you're you want to be looking at a good dosage um, for those children well, the most important um, thing at this age it would be his brain development um, and brain is made up of a high percentage of it, it's made up of fat, so fish oil uh, that will provide him with the essential fats um, to be ideal. Um, also multivitamin, um, if he doesn't have uh, enough uh, fruits and vegetables in his, in his diet, it would be good to provide him with the uh, um, nutrient requirements. So I think it's really essential that we pack our kids off with a, with a good nutritional breakfast, um, something that's sort of high in complex carbohydrates. Uh, the brain needs a nice trickle uh, of energy throughout the, throughout the day, and so, so uh, a, a porridge or, or fruit or something like that is going to it's going to be the big start for the day. Um, we also know that other brain foods, such as oily fish, we know that our consumption of oily fish is much lower than the government would actually recommend. Um, the UK, not an oily fish loving nation, uh, and we're only consuming about a third of, of that is sort of necessary for sort of normal sort of growth and development, certainly for our kids. Uh, for individuals who you know, maybe oily fish isn't their, their cup of tea. So looking at a, a good quality supplement, good quality EPA supplement is, is a good alternative to consuming fish. Um, and for GP Chewables is a good product. We are lucky to be able to um, collaborate with the uh, charity for Good Reading and 50p from every box of Vegeta Chewables will be going to the, to the charity.